What's up, challengers? Welcome to the gym. My name is Jimmy Leader Geo, and this is season eight, episode four of the locker room. The San Francisco Giantes are team building for Lars, aka El Cesar, and the Borussia Don fan. He, when we were scheduling this battle, kind of uh, we were chatting on Discord, he brought up to me that people consider his team to be one of the best offensive teams in the league. He mentioned how my team has a reputation of being one of the better defensive teams in the league. So I think he's anticipating this matchup is going to be a big clash, like offense versus defense uh, but I chose to go a different direction with it so looking at my team this week we're bringing Proto the Mega Scizor, Home Meowner the Mew, Big Burb the Archaeops, Remix the Ditto, Tefiti the Shaman and Dig Dug the Dug Trio so I kind of went my mindset with this is Lars's team I don't know if anyone has really seen this I'll, I'll go over his roster in just a second but a massive edge quake weakness and so I really want to take advantage of that and really push the button on his shared weaknesses uh, especially through his top tier mon so looking at his roster he has the Mega Manectric, the Kyurum B, the Tornadus I, Moana, our baby Moana, Moana why? Uh, the Tapu Fini, Cobalion, Gengar, Crocodile, uh, Delphox, Garboder, Kumala, and Lorantis. So, looking at this team, just look at this Edgequake weakness. Manectric, weak to ground. Uh, Kurum B, weak to rock. Tornadus, weak to rock. Moana, exception. Cobalion, weak to ground. Gengar, weak to ground. Uh, Instigator, uh, which is Chase's nickname for Crocodile, uh, exception. Um, Delphox weak to ground, Garboder weak to ground, uh, and then the last two mons also exceptions. So of his a roster of 11, four of them are don't have a weakness to Edgequake, uh, and none of them resist both. So you can neutral all of these guys with uh, Edgequake coverage. And so I wanted to bring, for that reason I wanted to bring both uh, Dig Dug and Big Burb, because I feel like they will be able to... Uh, push that button a lot in the mid game and really drop a lot of weaknesses onto him. His Z mons are Gengar and Delphox. These are good uh, mon to Z. Uh, Gengar has decent coverage to really take advantage of that or can just try and blow holes through people um, by dropping something along, along those lines. Looking at his team, uh, as I always do, I sort of tier them based on likelihood that I think they're going to come. Uh, so the top row being like they they gotta come like I, i'm sure they're coming the second row being very likely brings the th the third row in a lot of senses sometimes it's like neutral uh in this case i actually think they're pretty likely i won't be surprised if they come and the last row is i will be surprised if they come garboder um being a weird exception it depends how he wants to play this game uh, it's possible he was trying to mind game with the like oh i've got such an offensive team but he might recognize that some of his offensive mons don't match up well against me uh, especially given the fact that a ditto can trap and kill two of his fastest offensive mon that being the mega manectric and the gengar uh, Cobalion also uh, not doesn't love <laughs> being trapped and taken out by Dougie. Delphox the same way. Like a lot of his mon are kind of weak to Doug Trio. Um, could be running Shed Shell on some of these mons, but probably not in his best interest. And the Manectric can't. So if the Manectric ever gets a kill against me, then uh, Doug Trio comes in, traps it, and kills it, and there's nothing he can do about that. He could uh, run Magnet Rise as fourth move, uh, but he would have to click that before the Dougie comes in to trap him and it might not work out so well in his favor. So uh, I like that about about his team. Um, so he's going to have to prep for the Dougie and he's going to have to eliminate that Dougie. So if I play Dougie right, uh, then it, it matches up well against his team. So the Manectric definitely coming. Curum is very hard to wall. Um, does a lot of damage, very offensive. And so and he's brought it three times already. So I'm pretty sure the Curum is coming. I don't have like amazing answers for it, but every member of my team either has priority that's super effective against it or is faster than it, barring it being scarfed. And I pray that he scarfs it because it's so much easier to deal with if it's a scarfed mon. Uh, locks in on something and I can really take advantage of that afterwards. The Tornadus, it's another genie. There's so many genies in the league format. It actually kind of bothers me. Um, it's the same reason, like I, I wish we could do something about this. 
genies are all the same to me. He's gonna bring a genie. It could run mixed. It could run uh, special. It could run physical. I've prepped for both. I have answers to it. I, like it'll come. Maybe it'll click bulk up. Maybe it won't. Maybe it'll be defog. Maybe it won't be. Maybe it'll have tailwind. Maybe it won't be. I don't know. Like, there's a lot of things it can do. Uh, it's not particularly scary to me. I have a lot of things that can um, answer it and. Ditto's a, a great check to it because it'll outspeed and, and take it out. Uh, things like that. Moana is interesting. Can certainly hurt some of the members of my team. Doesn't love Bullet Punch from Proto. Doesn't love uh, the Shaman. I'm not particularly worried about the Moana. Moana's going to do what Moana does. Take hits well. Defog if it needs to. Um, try and distribute some damage outwardly and prevent uh, any status from grounded Pokemon. Kabalion, uh, another Pokemon that can run defensive or offensive, uh, can have setup with the notably the um, Rock Polish Swords Dance options, does also have special sets. In general, not really strong enough to break through a Toxapex, which I'm not bringing, but he doesn't know I'm not bringing that. Uh, the Gengar is an option for him if he's particularly worried about the Mew, as is the Crocodile. So in that sense, even though they're on different tiers, I think they're both equally likely brings. Uh, just to, because Mew is a pretty likely bring. And actually, in many of the iterations of the team I made when I first started building it, I didn't bring the Mew. Primarily because it's basically begging for uh, Crocodile to trap it and pursue it. So there, I, uh, I have to be careful about that, obviously, but Mew is an amazing switch in for several of the Ramons, and I'll get to it when I go through those sets specifically. I'm just going through his team first. Uh, the Delphox Azimon coverage is okay. Stats are okay. Uh, if it's running a Z move, it doesn't really take much use of its non-Blaze ability, which is Magician. Uh, Weak to Doug Trio. Doug Trio can, if I can trap it with Doug Trio, I can take it out. And Remix is a great switch into it if I need to kind of tank it, so to speak. The Garboder, again, uh, if he's running a very defensive set and really wants to set up hazards, I do have Defog on my team, so I'm not particularly worried about it. And the Pokemon that is going to Defog, being Proto, um, is a very safe switch into the Garboder. I have some special defense investment on my Proto, so even if it's packing Hidden Power Fire, it shouldn't be doing that much to me, and I can roost off that damage and get rid of any of his uh, hazards. The Spikes, um, if I start seeing him layering Spikes, I'm coming in with Proto right away. Might do it anyway, might just come in as soon as I see the Garboder. Uh, and the Toxic Spikes, of course, won't poison me, and I'll be able to get rid of them right away. Uh, I, I don't imagine he'd bring them, because Toxapex is a pretty obvious bring so to speak for me uh, the reason I didn't bring it is how many of his offensive mons beat it and so I would just be switching it in against defensive mons I'd rather not <laughs> not in this matchup at least uh, Kamala if it were a Z Kamala Z sleep talk is kind of fun I guess so maybe he could have done that it's a rapid spinner it could come. It's normal type. Normal types can always come to these games, guys. They honestly, like, th that's the beauty of normal types in the draft format, especially when they have good coverage. Uh, and then Lurantis. <laughs> I don't really know about Lurantis. Like, it's, it's slow. It's not that strong. It's not that bulky. Uh, I really just don't see it coming. Grass type's not particularly good against me, and it can't really break through anything so I don't I don't see Lorantis coming I'm not particularly worried about it so now let's go through my Pokemon um, per your guys's requests I did kind of expand the screen size a little bit to zoom in so you guys can see my mons a little bit better when it's not in uh, maximized settings so I apologize for all the other videos when it was a lot smaller uh, so we have proto the mega scissor obviously I'm running a high amount of special defense investment because Several of his mons, the only way they'll have coverage for Scizor is HP Fire. Obviously not particularly strong. I want to be able to tank those HP Fires if possible. Uh, and then rocking Bullet Punch, you turn Defog Roost. Really just playing a bulky pivot uh, this week. And um, the Bullet Punch will be an important check to the uh, Curum. I'm a decent switch into the Curum. 
Uh, if it doesn't have HP fire, that would be a mistake. Uh, so I will have to kind of scout for that, but I'm almost positive it will pack it. Uh, Mew is an interesting one. So Mew, I'm running enough speed to outspeed. Uh, where are my other numbers? Damn it, it's on that screen, so I can't, <laughs> I, I can't pull them up. Um, the 165 outspeeds neutral Gengar and uh, neutral max speed Tornadus, as well as uh, max speed invested uh, anything. Like he has like a couple of 95 speed ones, I think. Which one is it? Instigator being 92. So uh, yeah, I think I think I have those numbers right. So it's it's set to outpace those mon so 165 it, it's overkill it's a jump point uh, i only needed 164 to outspeed the neutral max speed uh, tornadus which is 163 but i jump pointed so whatever 165 why not i'm not going to complain uh max attack investment rock and gunk shot low kick sucker punch and u-turn with an expert belt the expert belt and my investment sucker punch uh one hit ko's a gengar even with a little bit of hp investment the Gunk Shot annihilates the uh, Moana, which might think it's a middle ground switch into the Mew. U-turn is to get out if I see that there's a, uh, a Crocodile around that could switch in on me. Low Kick also does a lot to that Crocodile, but it won't one hit KO it, so I need to get it weakened first. Low Kick uh, with the Expert Belt and this investment. We'll do a hefty amount to the Kyurem. Won't one hit KO it. And uh, low kick decent against the Kabalion. Uh, I I would have to kind of consider what the right move is for me there. Uh, whether regarding this matchup against the Kabalion, and I, I really like having the additional priority just because he does have a lot of fast sweepers, and there are potential end game scenarios that I could foresee where he kind of sets up for a high speed end game sweep. Uh, Mew, just by nature of his natural bulkiness, actually tanks special Kyurem really well. So, the which puts into my consideration that it's possible maybe even likely that he runs like physical Kyurem B even though you know he doesn't have the ice stab like he doesn't super need it uh, fusion bolt and outrage will do <laughs> a lot to my team so I think there's a possibility that he runs he runs something like that uh, with high attack investment but uh, moving on, that's that's my Mew set, really just there for a lot of offensive pressure, good coverage uh, that really takes advantage of a lot of the Pokemon on his team. And uh, moving on to Big Burb. Big Burb went through a couple of iterations as well, but we're running Rocky MZ, Head Smash, Earthquake, U-Turn, and Roost. Fourth move didn't really matter. At one point I had Stealth Rocks on it. I put Stealth Rocks on a different Mon. Now I'm, you know, I don't want to pack three Stealth Rocks on my Mon, which at one point when my team was in the middle of being built, I did have. So, uh, Head Smash, Rocky, and Z, he doesn't have Pokemon that want to switch in on this. Like, he could switch in on the Kabalion, still take a lot of damage and be threatened by the Earthquake. U-Turn, uh, it's a fast U-Turn. Uh, Archeops outspeeds or, or speed ties everything but three of his Pokemon. So, very fast, looking good. Uh, like I said before, the Rock Edgequake combo is amazing for him. Uh, U-turn for more momentum. Uh, I now have momentum on three of my mons, both in high speed tier, mid speed tier, and slow speed tier. Uh, Roost is just because, like I said before, the fourth move is kind of whatever, and I figure um, I can roost off potential, like, some damage. Like, I could switch in against a Tornadus, take some damage, potentially roost up, um, most sets of Tornadus won't be two-hit KOing Big Burb, so if I'm anticipating him to switch, I can roost back up into uh, non-defeatist territory and something like that. But really, the Rocky MZ head smash is very hard for him to deal with, so that's kind of my mindset there. Ditto, you know what Ditto is going to do. Ditto is going to Ditto. Uh, he's running HP ground, so that if he's running an HP Ice uh, Mega Manectric, I have super effective coverage for it. 
Uh, and again, because Ground is very good against a lot of his team. Tefiti is running an Expert Belt set is, as well as Mew. Uh, Seed Flare, Earth Power, Hidden Power, Ice, and Dazzling Gleam. That coverage uh, has something for, I think, everything on his team. Um, I'm pretty sure I, I built this uh, very early and didn't make a lot of changes to it. Same speed tier as Home Yowner. And then Dig Dug is really here to trap and kill a lot of his offensive mons that uh, aren't prepared for it. The Choice Scarf means I outspeed the Manectric. Manectric uh, can't run a uh, Shed Shell, obviously, so it's trapped once I get this in against it, uh, which makes him... It would be remiss of him to be spamming Volt Switch, but also Remix is a great switch into Mega Manectric, so I can push the button a lot of the time, maybe get in, maybe get a Volt Switch, uh, maybe get in, get out, get ahead, uh, heal college, something like that. So Edgequake combo, of course, Pursuit, just as a safe click against, say, the Gengar, if the Gengar is opting to run uh, Shed Shell or something like that. And then Stealth Rock, just in case I feel it's, it, it, that it's important. So, um, quick one this week, guys. Uh, only 16 minutes. Uh, I'm kind of speeding these up a little bit. What do you guys think of the team? I think I like the idea that I'm taking for this one. Make it a quick game. Uh, take him out of his comfort zone and put him in a position where I can and, uh, trap and kill a lot of his top tier mons and then play around some of the weaker lower tier mons because that's the one thing I'm noticing. His lower tier mons have really bad stats and at a certain point when you don't have the coverage to beat someone and your stats are really bad, a lot of the time you just lose in a head-to-head -head matchup even if it's kind of a neutral one. So that's really what I'm looking to take advantage of this game. Um, it's going to be a fast paced game. I don't have a lot of recovery on my team, so I really just need to focus on uh, assessing my win conditions and playing it off that way. So that's my thought process going into this game. It looks like my uh, team still isn't genned, <laughs> so, but it will be pretty soon. Uh, so I'm going to go talk to Lars and um, get ready for this game. So leave me a comment, leave me some love in the comment section down below. As always, my name is Jim Geo. You guys are the challengers. Thanks for stopping by, and I'll see you guys next time.